pyrolutamide was supposed to be the one, a topical antiandrogen that wouldn't mess with your hormones, no finasteride side effects, no oral pills, no systemic suppression, just a simple scalp solution. Block DHC where it matters and keep your hair. On paper, it looked like a breakthrough. Clinical trials showed early promise. The company behind it raised hundreds of millions and the hype in the hair loss community was sky high. But in late 2023, it all fell apart. The final phase three trial, the one that really mattered, failed. Not just underwhelmed, failed to beat the placebo. After years of development, pyrolutamide ended up being marketed as a cosmetic. Not a drug, just another scalp tonic in a crowded market. This is the full story of why pyrolutamide failed, from its science to its clinical trials to the financial collapse that followed. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. How was pyrolutamide supposed to work? Pyrolutamide, also called KX826, was developed by Kinto Pharmaceuticals in China. It's a topical androgen receptor antagonist, a non-steroidal compound designed to block DHC from binding to receptors in your scalp hair follicles. Unlike finasteride or dutasteride, which reduces DHC systemically in your body, pyrolutamide aimed to work locally. Applied directly to the scalp, the idea was simple. Block DHC right at the follicle and avoid systemic side effects like brain fog, libido changes, and hormonal imbalances, as has been reported by some people. Lab tests showed pyrolutamide was very potent. It binds the androgen receptor about 10 times more strongly than bicalutamide, a prostate cancer drug, and importantly, blood levels after topical application were almost undetectable. So it stayed local. Mechanically, it made sense. And that's why early trials were so exciting. Early trials and the hype. Kinto ran phase two trials in both China and the US. In the China trial on men, the group using 0.5% pyrolutamide twice daily saw an increase of about 15 hairs per square centimeter over placebo after 24 weeks. That's solid. Not revolutionary, but definitely better than many of the over-the-counter products that we see. In women, the results were a bit less dramatic, but still statistically significant. Again, small but real gains. And in the US trial, the number looked similar, around 10 to 15 hairs per square centimeter of net gain. Safety was excellent, no systemic side effects, only some mild scalp irritation, which is common when you apply something to the scalp on a daily basis. By this point, investors were all in. Kinta raised 240 million in an IPO. Reddit threads and hair loss forums were buzzing. Pyrolutamide was being called the next finasteride without the sides. But everything hinged on one last hurdle, the phase three trial. So what went wrong? The phase three study was big. 740 men, 24 weeks, double blind placebo controlled, the gold standard of science. And on the surface, the drugs still worked. Hair counts increased from baseline and the company reported a very strong statistical significance when compared to each patient's own starting point. But this is where the catch comes in. The placebo worked too. In fact, both the treatment and the placebo group saw similar hair count gains. That meant no statistically significant difference between them. Pyrolutamide wasn't better than a vehicle solution applied twice daily. And that's where it died. When you're trying to get a drug approved, you need to beat placebo. Not just show it kinda works, but show that it works better than doing nothing. And it didn't. A pattern we've seen before. Pyrolutamide isn't the only topical antiandrogen to face this problem. Others, like fluoridyl and clascosterone, also showed potential early on, but stumbled in large-scale trials. Fluoridyl increased the percentage of anagen phase hair over several months and was shown to be well tolerated with no systemic absorption, but it never became widely adopted, likely due to limited commercial support and lack of large-scale data. Clascosterone was tested in women and showed Decent result in younger patients, but the placebo effect again made interpretation difficult. 
only a small subgroup showed clear benefit and the overall data were completely mixed. Interestingly, some research compounds like the IU-based molecules have continued to generate interest in the community thanks to the strong binding affinity and user-reported outcomes. But again, without formal clinical trials, they remain in the research or cosmetic category or the gray market as we call it. Pyrolusamide, on the other hand, had the resource and the infrastructure to go all the way through phase 3 trials. And when it failed to outperform placebo in that context, it just couldn't be marketed as a prescription therapy anymore. The financial aftermath. When the phase 3 results were announced in November 2023, Kinto's stock dropped 32% in a single day. Within a week, it had nearly fallen 50%, and since its peak in 2021, the company has lost over 98% of its market value. They ended up laying off staff, cut R&D spending, and they completely stopped pursuing drug approval. Instead, they pivoted. In 2024, Kinto registered pyrolutamide as a cosmetic ingredient, not a prescription drug anymore. It is now being sold under names like Ferritane as a scalp health solution that you can find online through gray market resellers, but it is not an approved treatment for androgenic alopecia. Just to be clear, KX826 wasn't pulled because it was dangerous. It wasn't. It's safe, well-tolerated, and does bind the androgen receptors. But that's not enough. It didn't beat placebo, and in drug development, that's just game over. So what does this mean for the future? Pyrolutamide's failure tells us a few things. First, that topical anti-androgens are still incredibly hard to get right. Potency, delivery, receptor binding, all of it matters. But unless a drug can consistently outperform placebo in large, diverse populations, it will never get approval. Second, that early trial results doesn't always predict final outcomes. Phase 2 trials are small. Once you scale up and and add the real-world noise, diet, compliance, genetics, things get super messy. And third, that cosmetic rebranding is now the standard fallback for failed hair drugs. Fluidil, Clascosterone, and now Pyrolutamide all ended up being sold as cosmetics in some kind of form. Others, like RU5841 based formulas, continue as research use or cosmetic products outside of the regulatory drug pathway. So if you're considering Pyrolutamide today, know what it is and what it isn't. Hair loss treatments are a graveyard of promising ideas. Pyrolutamide got way closer than most, but close is just not enough. 